Alrighty. Hello, friends. Welcome to Risk. My name is Cole. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm taking Ripstick McGee and his really cool shoulder patches uh, and buttons all the way from novice to grandmaster in Risk Global Domination, which is a free-to-play Risk game. Uh, if you haven't tried it out yet, I definitely encourage you to do it. Risk is super fun. It's really fun to play, especially uh, on PC because the games move so quickly. So the games moving fast means that the games are really fun. You can play a bunch and uh, because there's a ranked circuit, you can improve yourself and measure yourself against the community and it's a really satisfying experience to do that. So uh, if you want to join me on that journey and uh, hopefully get some good tips on how to improve your game at risk, I would love to be your guide for that. Alrighty, great. So we're playing the Central America map. I like this map. It's a nice kind of warm-up map. I'm planning on playing maybe a couple games today, and this gets me loose, right? I just like this one a lot. Um, cool. So I'm in the last position. I'm the blue player, uh, and I'm going to watch really closely what my competition is doing. I want to kind of get an understanding of what they're like. Um, okay, so the first thing I notice is I've got a whole lot of troops in Central America. I'm sorry, in South America. They're all in Central America, actually, according to the map name. Uh, but I noticed a lot of guys in South America, and I also noticed that Red put troops in there. So um, what was a really good South America start where I could have maybe easily taken the continent over the course of one or two turns is no longer viable with that five stack sitting in there. And so that's okay. I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so instead what I see is that I have Louisiana. So here are the continents on this map. If you hold all of the um, territories that are highlighted, you know, you see Canada is all here up here in blue. If you're able to hold those territories for, the, for an entire turn, you get an extra set of troops uh, according to the value of the continent when your next turn begins. You can see Louisiana and Old Northwest are kind of the two most reasonable territories. They're plus three for four territories. And I noticed myself having a three stack in Louisiana, which only has um, one stacks. So what that means is it would be really easy to take. And so I will look at taking it. But I'm not going to rush into it because what I don't want to do is frustrate my opponents. Okay, so green puts eight troops here. I notice that orange has a strong presence in the Midwest kind of area. Where does purple go? So there's good and bad to being the sixth player. One of the good things that you'll see right away is that I get an extra three troops. Uh, later on, I'll be able to get, I will have the most valuable cards in that first turn set. The downside, and it's a pretty severe downside, I would say. Okay, he's gonna want me to get that stack out and I'm going to remove it. One of the downsides, and it's a, and it's a severe downside, is that I'm last. Uh, I kind of have to hold on for dear life um, once the uh, second set is starting to come in because I will be the last player. Uh, in theory, I'll, there's a chance that I'll be the last player to, to set in, which is really a bummer. Okay, so I'm bummed out about my South America because these two three stacks are... There, a lot of players are showing interest down there, right? And so I don't really want to add material because I'm going to try and stay away from the ambitions of others as best as I can, um, which is just a real shame. So I'm going to keep my troops in safe spots. And uh, on this turn, I'm going to have to... I'm going to slowly pull myself out of that position. I'm going to attack twice, which I don't love doing. I'm going to pull these guys... I think I'll pull these guys over here. Okay. So I'm going to go for a three position play. If I can supplement that with a continent, I will take the continent. I'm going to very slowly get out of purple's way in Central America. Central America proper, that is. So the Yucatan, or uh, just south of the Yucatan, I should say. It looks like purple wants that position, so they'll get it. Red is reinforcing their South America. Okay, they would like... I will be able to concentrate my true unless green takes my blue one I should be able to 
concentrate my two or three stacks that are in South America, and I will do that. No one is yet uh, at risk of holding any bonuses, so I don't need to rush myself into holding any. But again, it, it really is convenient if you can hold a, hold a bonus for a turn or two. Just get yourself a little bit ahead, make yourself a little less vulnerable later in the game. The way this works with progressive cards is that the cards become so valuable by the end of the game um, that your primary strategy is to, to defeat other players. If you are the last person to eliminate, uh, if you are the person to eliminate someone's last territory, you get all of their cards. And because the card values increase um, with time, it eventually becomes the case that, you know, defeating another player can give you, you know, 40 troops or something insane like that, which beats the heck out of any of these continental bonuses. So, um, any advantage you can be to not over your opponents so that you're not eliminated uh, first or second is, of course, uh, a good thing. All right, so what does purple do? Green is kind of single stacking. No one else is even close to an 11 stack. They have the 11. Okay, now it's my turn. Let's shore up there. Okay. I'm going to make two attacks. Again, I don't really like over attacking. Um, you only need to make one attack to get a card. There's not really... You don't get excess value by holding more than that. Or attacking more than that. I am holding 13 territories, which will net me an extra troop. Uh, if my territories aren't eliminated, just through a... A pure distributed bonus. Purple is in the same way. They're holding 12 territories, so unless purple loses one of their positions, they're going to uh, to get an extra unit as well in the next turn. But it looks like they lose there, so they're under 11, so they're not going to get that extra troop. And again, any extra troop you get, I, I take it, right? <laughs> It also indicates that my positions are in undesirable places, right? Okay. What are you doing, Green? Probably okay, reinforcing out there now. Where does that six go? The 11. Oh my gosh, Green's a bot. Okay, so Green um, quit the game and a computer has replaced them. Uh, that's really important. That changes the dynamic of the game tremendously when that happens um, because computer players play really, really differently than human players. So that's something I want to make note of. Uh, green is going to be a very bad neighbor, is going to be somebody who I do not want to position any of my troops near. Okay, great. I'm going to hold my... So I should get four troops this turn, which I'm, I'm delighted about. Great. That extra troop, I'll take it all day long. Okay, I am going to end up taking a territory here. And all I'm going to do is reinforce this down to here. Okay. And I get a wild card. Great. Okay. So let's see what happens. Somehow yellow is in a really great spot. Yellow was able to get an extra troop as well, it looks like. They're holding 14 territories. Red sets in early. I'm not sure why you would do that. But we'll see. Puts them into, all of them into South America. Okay. They're probably going to take South America at this point. Um, or they could. I, it's, not, it's not a good idea, right? There's so many troops in South America. They're going to have to run through at least 10 more troops to take the rest of that continent. If they are able to hold it for four turns, it would only be on that fourth turn that they repay 
themselves for the value it costs to take South America. So that's the kind of math that I recommend you do when you are um, determining whether or not to take a continent. A lot of the times it's not worth doing unless it's extremely easy to do. Um, because progressive, oh my gosh, and he runs over purple. So that's a really bad idea as well. <laughs> that's, that's really tough. How many troops did they each lose? Purple lost eight troops. That is miserable. Okay. So it looks like red wants Central America or something. I, I don't understand why else they would have done that. Green sets in. What do they do here? They roll the eight versus two. Do they roll the six versus five? They do not. Okay, so what does purple do? And good, they pull out there. Okay, so what's purple up to? They're in a bit of a dire situation. Losing that six stack really hurts them. Or losing eight troops really hurts them. They're now the weakest player on the board because of that. Um, although there's an argument that maybe red's a little bit weaker because red is not holding any cards. So they don't have any reserve troops that they can dip into when the rest of us are cashing our cards he will be the man left wanting okay so hopefully he doesn't hit my five i don't know why he would but always a chance let's see does he break my continent he does it's no big deal uh i wasn't really defending it and so i don't lose a lot of troops uh because of it What do I want to do? I probably should put some troops into white because they're going to get an extra. Yeah, I'm going to put some. I'm going to take two white territories. I'm over attacking in this game, but I don't mind that I am because mo there's no one who's clearly ahead of everyone else. Okay. That puts them under 12 territories, which is great. They're doing a three position play, white is. And they're doing a good job of it. Nine, nine, eight. They're in three corners of the board. It's great. They're pretty well positioned. I'm doing kind of a four position play. I have three fives and a six. They card skip. Okay, so they don't take a territory um, because they're at the very beginning of the turn order. Um, well, I don't know if I would have done this because the two players have already cashed their cards in at this point, right? So normally, uh, if you are first in the turn order, you are only guaranteed the, the weakest set. You get the eight set. Um, Dang it. <laughs> okay, it looks like I'm not going to hold. I, I really should take my focus off of trying to take a territory. No one's going to let me do it. All right, sorry, take a continent. Uh, now there's two players who are willing to be bad neighbors in this game. Anyway, like I was saying, white is card skipping because they don't want to guarantee themselves the lowest set. However, two players after them in the turn order have already cashed in, and so that means they're not going to get the four set. They're going to get the eight set. Um, but instead, by doing that card skip, they're giving themselves the 15 and they're making me, unfortunately, I was, I was lined up to get the 15. Now I'm going to get the 12. But that's, no, that's not a huge difference to me because I think being at the end of the setting order is itself kind of a disadvantage in some ways because um, you are the last to... Uh, you're kind of hoping that you get a lucky set on three or four, but it, you won't make it to your fifth card on that second turn order. Usually the game will end by then. So, so there's a bit of a risk um, with all that as well. Anyway, I will not be card skipping. Okay. The weakest player on this board is going to be red. Will be the red player. I am going to do... Put one there. I'm going to put the other two here. The really nice thing about my positioning is that right now I am very, uh, I think I'm pretty difficult to, to kill. 
which is good. I'm so spread out. Uh, and I'm going to take this position here because it's nice and strategic. It can get me south. It can get me north. Okay. And so let's see. Do I have three soldiers? I do. I get to hold my wild. That wild card guarantees for me that I'm going to have a set on three. So I think I'm, in, I'm really happy with how this game's going so far. Being in four spots and going to have a guaranteed set on three, I think is a really, really strong advantage. So I'm quite happy with that. So the green and the red players are definitely the weakest. And I have good lines on them. Pretty good lines. Green is pretty well distributed. But red is not really. Yeah, my chief uh, competition in this game is, is white. But white is not going to be able to get me in South America because they don't have a South America position, which is good. I'll be getting the 12. It's almost never worth, worth it, and it certainly won't be in this game, to um, eliminate a player on the first card set. The cards aren't worth very much yet, and uh, players are usually still pretty strong. Uh, shouldn't say that. They're not always, worth, they're not always really strong. Uh, but in this game, they are, so. Okay, purple gets the 10. Where do they put it? And where do they go with it? Wow, single stack. Okay, where do they go? What do they do? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Interesting. All right. Get the trade. I'm not taking that trade. What a bad default that is. <laughs> I'm not going to use my wild card. I don't have to. Okay, my most strategic positions are actually because, again, the weakest players are red and green. Green has a strong presence down here. I'm going to put a bunch of troops down here. Um, and I'm going to put almost all of the rest of them here. I'm going to get a take here and I'll put, okay, great. So I like my positions a lot. I like my positions a lot. Um, this 12 can go north, it can go south into Mexico if it needs to. My 12 down here can do whatever it needs to do over here. I've got a strong position here in Newfoundland, which is great, Newfoundland. It's kind of the corner of the board. It's nice and out of the way. Um, my Central America position is, is not very strong, right? But here in Guatemala, it, it can't go back down south. It really can't do much, actually, especially with that six. Well, the 16 is now moved. Uh, that was not a great. I'm not sure I agree with what White did there, but I have a guaranteed set here, right? This wild card guarantees that I have a set on three. So let's see if there's a weak player. Uh, it's probably early. I probably won't set in on my turn um, because no one is going to be able to set me in again in my turn. But that set on four, I should be strong enough to avoid getting killed. Um, and so I should be able to take a set on four. Should be able to wait until I have my set on four, is I suppose what I mean. So unless a player is incredibly weak, that's the only circumstance in which I would, I would set in right now. A okay, green player sets in, they're going to hit yellow, or that 17 either goes, where is it going? If it goes into the 8 or the 7, that's both great news. It goes into the 8. Okay. That weakens orange pretty tremendously, or orange is now only in... Um, orange is now... 
notwithstanding the one in Mexico, pretty much in a single spot. I love that 11 there. That 11 and that 24 are doing a good, and the 12. Like, this 12 down here is so well sheltered. Okay. Is it worth it? Oh, okay. Purple's doing something here that I don't think I endorse. They're going to defeat the red player, but they're not going to have a set. Okay. I can kill the purple player now and get their five set. Okay. Need to focus here. Thirty. Can I do this? I'm not sure I can, you know. Not going to be able to do it. It's a real shame. Okay. Instead, what I'm going to do is this. Okay. So I did have a set there. I didn't choose to use it because I couldn't make a, um, a game ending play. The only player that would have been worth killing right there was purple, but purple, uh, I, I wasn't actually well lined. The, I could have done it if I didn't own Kentucky, but I own Kentucky. For th this 12 stack couldn't do anything without my big stack that I was going to have to push up. Uh, I just, uh, I couldn't do it. If you, if you go back and watch you'll, and, and count it out yourself, you'll see that I was not going to be able to do it. Interesting. Yellow did... I'm sorry. White is bummed out there because white couldn't set in either. Uh, okay, what do you do, orange? I don't think white survives. I think purple eats white. Let's see. Purple doesn't eat white, then I strongly consider it myself. All right, what does purple do? Purple sets, purple gets the 35. If I'm purple, I go get white. Sets me in again. I don't know if he can eliminate the board yet. A lot of thinking. Yeah, you put them all there, I think. Yep, there goes white. So, or maybe not. I mean, he's going to have to be quick. He might not be quick enough, in which case it's my kill. Gonna be close. He doesn't get it. I get it. That's unfortunate for him. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't have anything encouraging I can say about that. That just sucks. Okay, so I'm going to definitely go get white. And then I've got some time, so let me think about what I'm gonna do here. I take white, I set in. I take green. Okay. They were holding a set, which is great. It means I don't have to use my wild card. I get to double set, double trade. 
Yeah, this game's over. Okay, I take green out now. The only player who can set potentially is purple. Damn. <laughs> I just screwed that up too, I think. Okay, but I'm holding five. I don't know what choice these players have. Uh, the only thing that could be my downfall is... Orange going really hard into me right now, which they don't do, and purple having a set on three, which they very well could, but even if they do, I don't think they can kill me. And they can't set themselves, yeah, okay, this game's over. It'd be great if they if they opened the board up for me a little bit here. Okay, they do open the board up for me a little bit, which is great. This 36 is inactive, which is a real shame. I didn't play that perfectly <laughs> by any stretch. I'm gonna hang on to my wild card just in case. And then I'm going to go and take out the orange player, and that should end the game. Hundred percent roll. Great. All right. And then I set in again, and that's the game. Great. Oh, and he was holding a wild too. Two wilds. It's great. Love two wilds. Hit him with a good game. Like that will do. Probably that will do. And that will do. All right. Let's do this first. Alrighty, friends, we did it. We got the big win. Feels good. All right, well, we did it. We won. It was a good warm-up game. Gonna play a couple more, record a couple more today. Um, but Ripstick McGee is a big winner. Look at that. Look at his monocle. He could look at that big smile. What a guy. What a character. We love to see it. We were able to beat two masters: an expert, an intermediate, and a beginner. They played really pretty well. I mean, I would say that was a pretty high skill game, which is good. Uh, and we were able to, to get the win, which is awesome. That takes Ripstick McGee, who's currently an intermediate, puts him at about rank 100,000. We are now 8 and 5. That 5, you guys didn't see the video. I had to quit a game halfway through. I started recording at an inopportune time and had to quit the game. And it looks like, as expected, the bot didn't clutch it out. So, <laughs> alrighty. Yeah, well, friends, tons of fun. Thanks for playing with me. Uh, and uh, I look forward to playing again sometime with you soon. Until then, take care.